Hello, I'm Charles Payne in for Neil Cavuto. Well, forget about the path of Hurricane Oral. We're tracking a Category 5 spending storm. Next week, President Obama taking his spending push around the country, kicking off Monday in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wednesday is going to go to Cleveland, Ohio, and then rounding out the week Friday with a press conference at the White House. My next guest says if he had to choose between the two storms, he'd take his chance with Mother Nature. With me, Republican Congressman John Culberson. Uh, Congressman, you know, it's interesting because lately a lot of people have sort of gotten this uh, fiscal responsibility thing. Uh, they're a little late to the game. You are the real deal. But my big question to you, is it possible for the president to get that same kind of religion? No, unfortunately, I think we, by watching what this president has done since he's taken office, can see he's not going to change course. No matter what he says, no matter how much his Democrat allies in the Congress holler, he's not changing course. He is a committed ideologue who is committed to turning America into France and turning us into a European-style socialized democracy welfare state. And it is something the American people are rejecting, as we see in the polls. We'll see a tidal wave this November, electing a new cons constitutional conservative majority in record numbers, I think, this November. And then, uh, secondly, I don't think from his uh, actions since he took office, the debt has gone to unprecedented levels, spending at unprecedented levels. We've seen actual increases in the number of government employees, while the private sector is shedding jobs right. and, and 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 that's where the engine of this economy is is in small business and in the private sector something this president who's never made a payroll and has spent his whole life looking to redistribute other people's money he doesn't know anything about the private sector well you know uh, there's no doubt that politics in my mind uh, I agree with you have driven the policy more so than economics but it seems like uh, between now and November he's going to play the small business card. Uh, I, we heard about it again today that the Republicans are standing in the way of trying to help small businesses. That's something that tugs at everybody's heartstrings. How do you come back that, at that? First, to point out the practical reality that uh, Republicans can't block anything in Congress. We in the House are in the minority. They can pass anything they want, and Nancy Pelosi has done so. The Senate Republicans uh, can very narrowly have, have a shot if we hold on to all of our votes, might be able to slow things down. But, but, but secondly, are, are look Republicans at what the for this plan, for the small business plan, why would they be against helping out small businesses, at least through this particular bill? Well, well, that was my second point, is look at the content of what the president is proposing. And I suspect you'll see, as you said in the outset, this is going to be another spending spree of borrowed money. 96 cents out of every dollar spent by the federal government is borrowed. So this is all borrowed money. They see the uh, federal government as an opportunity to redistribute wealth, and they can't do this administration and this Congress can't do anything without raising taxes or raising spending. Now, I have heard, Charles, some discussion about making the R&D tax credit, extending it or making it permanent. That's terrific. Republicans will support that. About offering a payroll tax holiday, we would certainly support anytime, anywhere, cutting taxes. Republicans support that and cutting spending. But remember, this president said it's a holiday. They're going to uh, allow the biggest tax increase in history to take effect in January. So we're very skeptical as conservatives of the content right of what the president is proposing. So let's we have say, to see it first. Let, let's say the content includes a couple of things you just mentioned, in addition to letting uh, the Bush tax cuts expire on the top 2-3%. Uh, does that put you in some sort of a, uh, at least political combined, uh, co uh, co I don't want to say uh, hard uh, time, but you know, does it, does it cause you some sort of angst there? Because it's got some things that you want, and it also plays mm -hmm. to, the, to the populace that says, hey, listen, why do these millionaires need a break anyway? Well, we as a con fiscal conservatives are going to look very carefully at the content, and if, as has been the pattern, uh, Pelosi, Obama, and Reid uh, cut taxes here while raising them over here, that's something we're not going to support. We've got to cut taxes across the board for everybody. Let all of us keep more of our own money to save, invest, and spend as we wish. That will create jobs, as we've done in Texas, Charles. Look at what's happening in Texas. Under Governor uh, Rick Perry's leadership, we've kept out a state personal income tax. We've kept taxes low. We've got a, our budget is balanced. And then you look at California. Taxes through the roof, regulation through the yeah. roof, jobs fleeing California to come to Texas. The Obama administration is following the California model of raising taxes and spending. And so we will not really have a conflict as conservatives in voting against 
uh, tax cuts right. that are uh, offset by massive tax increases. Let's just cut taxes. This isn't complicated. We get it in Texas. This is common sense. Cut my taxes, get out of my life, and get out of my way, right. and we'll make well, the economy rock. When, when it comes to fiscal responsibility, as they say in Texas, you are all hat and all cattle. Thanks a lot. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Good to be with you. Have a great holiday weekend. You too. Thanks. Well, the